Welcome to the Arlington Street Church podcast. Founded in 1729, Arlington Street continues today as a gathering place for progressive people of faith in the greater Boston area and beyond. We are located at the corner of Arlington and Boylston Streets, across from the Public Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace. This year, it has been my absolute honor to work with our coming of age group. During that time, I've gotten to know James, Catherine, and Madison, three of the most amazing young people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. I've had the pleasure of discussing our personal theologies, questioning our most deeply held beliefs, and sharing those things we hold most dear. We've wrestled with what it means to be a Unitarian Universalist and how we actually go about living our faith in the world. Today, we celebrate the sacred ritual of these children becoming youth. In a few minutes, you will have the opportunity to hear their personal credo statements. Each of them put great thought and care into crafting these statements of belief. Let us today honor their journey. So James, Madison, and Catherine, as you step forward into this next chapter, we send you with our fondest hopes and blessings. May life bring enough challenges to fuel your dreams, enough affirmation to honor your gifts, and nurture to give your spirit peace. Believe in your vision, follow your dreams, and know that here you will always be loved. I am honored to be introducing my mentee, Madison Bailey. I've known Madison's parents, Kate Harden and Jed Bailey, who are sitting right there, for quite a few years, and have seen Madison occasionally over the years as she grew from a little girl to the fine young woman I had the privilege to get to know over the last few months. Knowing her parents, I fully expected that Madison would be perceptive and competent but I wasn't prepared for what an evolved teenager she is. We had a great time walking around Fresh Pond and discussing what we consider important in life. I found exchanging ideas as the credo developed stimulating and fulfilling, and I think the feeling was mutual. Right? (laughs) Thank you, Madison. So here's Madison to tell us her credo. My name is Madison, and I'm fourth generation Unitarian Universalist. When my grandmother was a young girl, her family joined the Unitarian Church in support of a family friend who had received lots of backlash after opening his church in Chapel Hill, North Carolina to African American families. Today, the Community Church of Chapel Hill preaches a non-denominational faith far from its Presbyterian roots. My grandparents chose to raise my mom and aunt Unitarian, and my cousin, brother, and I have all been raised Unitarian too. My parents were married by Reverend Kim here at Arlington Street Church, and my brother and I were both dedicated by her. Before my parents encouraged me to join this coming of age class, I had only come to services here once or twice a year. I knew my family had connections to the church, but it wasn't significant in my everyday life. However, after attending consecutive weekly services, I have realized that the values of the congregation are very present in my belief system today, thanks to the way that my parents raised me. My core values revolve around the common sense that everyone deserves the same basic respect. One of the eight principles which emphasizes this is the inherent worth and dignity of every being. Everyone deserves to have their worth and dignity respected regardless of their past mistakes. To me, this principle also addresses our diversity as a human race. Someone once told me that people are like snowflakes because we're all different, but we're also very much the same. 
I think the concepts of acceptance and tolerance are incredibly important. As the human race, we should be able to recognize what makes us unique while trusting our similarities to bring us together. In a world where people want to use our differences to drive us apart, it is important to hold on to our commonalities. The kinder we are to one another, the easier it will be to set aside our differences and work together. Every act of kindness is another step towards strengthening our community. Climate change is still a controversial topic, despite its blatant repercussions. Climate change is probably more accurately described as the climate crisis, as the magnitude of its threat continues to climb. It becomes even more crucial that we overcome our contradictory beliefs to find solutions to the problems which, if not dealt with, will have all too real consequences. I find it kind of funny that the people who could easily afford to make a sizable dent in the climate crisis are the same people sitting on their overflowing bank accounts, not lifting a finger. I want to look them in the eye and tell them that when our world crumbles, the amount of money they have won't do them any good because there won't be any planet left to live on. There is no planet B. The climate crisis is happening now. It's time to take initiative and work towards saving our Earth. Another Unitarian Universalist principle which resonates with me is respect for the interdependent web of which we are a part. I feel like a lot of people forget that we aren't the only ones on this earth. We're steadily murdering our home. Hardly anyone can deny that now. But as we continue to live in blissful ignorance, who's thinking of the vast numbers of species who've been here far longer than we have, and that our actions are gonna kill them too? We're slowly killing off the planet, but it remains beautiful and teeming with life, despite the destruction we've already caused. Now it's up to us to take full responsibility for our actions and clean up the huge mess we've made. I am proud to be Unitarian Universalist, upholding the belief of strength and community. I believe that multiple people will always get the job done better than one, no matter how efficient you are on your own. I believe that we work better together. We should put our united strength into protecting the interdependent web of which we are all a part. We are all connected to this earth and will continue to face the consequences of ignorance. We stand together as one community gathered in love and service for justice and peace. Thank you. Madison, to celebrate your coming of age, I present you with this chalice and wish you all the best. Hi, everybody. My name is Deb Vintner. I'd like to present to you today Catherine Holt Doucette. Catherine is awesome. Um, I wanted to tell you that um, when Mark called me, I remember I was driving and Mark, her father, called and asked me to be Catherine's mentor. And that was, that was really an honor to be asked, you know, such, a, such an important job. It's kind of scary. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I want to present to you today um, Catherine Holt Doucette. And she has a really nice statement she'd like to share with all of you today. At the beginning of the coming of age program, we were asked, what do you believe? For me, it's difficult to sum up everything I believe because the word belief encompasses so many things, from beliefs I have about myself and how I wanna live in the world, to beliefs about the world and how I might be changed for the better and what role I might play in this change. On a personal level, I believe that you should find the good in everything. I know that not all things are good, but if you try to find the good in everything, it can make your life much, much happier. For example, a couple of months ago, I had the opportunity to go away without my parents to Cancun, Mexico for a week with my cousin. But during my relaxing tropical vacation, things took a turn for the worse and I ended up in the emergency room because I had strep throat and an extremely high fever. I did not want to be all the way in Mexico without my parents in a hospital. This was not a fun experience, 
but I still tried to find the good in it by saying, at least this makes a good story to tell. And it did make a good story, because here I am telling it right now. <laughs> because of my belief that you should find the good in everything, when I think of this trip, I don't think of the bad times. I think of the amazing times. Similarly, I also believe everyone, everything happens for a reason. In your lifetime, unexpected things come your way, but those unexpected events create your life and help you to learn life lessons. They prepare you for what is to come in your lifetime and help you to create a bigger and brighter future for yourself. When I was four, after a two-year period in Atlanta, we unexpectedly moved back to New England. Although I had to leave friends in a school I was familiar with behind, coming back to Boston encouraged me to get out of my introverted shell and to try to connect with new people. And through this, I developed stronger social skills that have helped me throughout my life today. I also believe that it is important to be brave, strong, and independent. My family has taught me these life values. My mom has always told me to do what I believe, even if it feels scary, because if it's an important issue, it is worth being brave for. For instance, making sure women have equal rights is very important to me. Because this is an important issue, I took part in marches in Boston to speak up and have my voice be heard. When I was younger, I remember asking myself, why can't women have equal rights? And to this day, I still ask myself that question. Why? But I still don't quite know the answer. On a societal level, I believe that everyone is here for a reason. So we should use our lives wisely and make the right choices. We were put on this earth to make the world a better place, not to pollute it, cause global warming, and take over the nature's home for our usage. Thousands of years ago, the world was a clean, natural, and a beautiful place to live. Why change that? I want to take the steps to make the world a better place, which could just mean sparing a dollar for someone who is homeless, or even just doing something bigger, like volunteering for an organization with a cause that I care deeply about. The smallest things can make a big difference, and they're not very hard to do. Finally, I believe that everyone should have the right to believe what they want to, religiously, politically, and in everyday life. Everyone should, have, everyone should be accepted the way they are because everyone is different and has their own personal strengths and weaknesses. We should encourage others to try new things, grow from mistakes, and be different. Today, I touched upon a number of ideas, but they all go back to one main idea. Live your strongest life and make the world a better place while doing so. Thank you. And Catherine, I'd like to present this chalice necklace um, on behalf of the Arlington Street congregation um, and in celebration of your coming of age. Yay, we get a left. <laughs> It's my honor to introduce James Foligno this morning. James joined the worship team in April of last year, so in a very real way, he doesn't need an introduction into this pulpit, as he's already been here many times now. The worship team consists of about a dozen people of all ages, and James is the youngest. You might think in that sort of environment, he would be the student, and those of us decades older would be his teachers. But the reality is that he continually teaches us with his curious, calm nature, and presence. I asked others on the worship team, and they agree that we have seen him grow ever more confident and secure in who he is. We are very proud of you, James. I was born into a society where certain people are oppressed for the color of their skin. It seems like such a silly concept that a physical feature can divide us so greatly. I was taught from a young age that people should not be judged on how they look, but on how they act. Sadly, no matter how much white people believe that skin color does not matter, they will always have biases about people of color. 
Throughout my life, I have tried to come to terms with this difficult reality. I believe in the inherent worth and dignity of every being, a Unitarian Universalist core value. I go to Vaseline Upper School, a public school in Cambridge where many different races of people learn together. This school has made me think about the daily inequalities that students of color face. Often, I notice teachers having unconscious double standards for students of color and promoting school policies that benefit the white supremacist culture. I struggle with how to be a good white ally. In the spring, I asked a group of black students questions about multiple black rappers. One student noted that I was asking them those questions because I thought since they were black, they would know more about black rappers. I generalized a population. I felt horrible and apologized. In that moment, I was trying to fit in, making an assumption that ended up being a microaggression. I realized that this was a learning opportunity for me. Making mistakes and apologizing is a key part of being a good white ally. The moment was a gift for me. Racial equality is a big issue in our country. Our president has been overtly racist many times, which damages our society. As Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Our country has shown the hate that many people possess, which shows us that we need to work to get to a better place. I consider racism to be one of the biggest threats to our civilization. In church, when we pray for our country, I often find my mind wandering to the racism in our world. Some people think that after slavery ended, racism ended. That is not true. People of color have continued to suffer for decades dealing with the effects of racism. I, continue, I consider it my mission to fight oppression. This connects to the Unitarian Universalist principle that we must dismantle racism and oppression within ourselves in our world to build a beloved community. Black Lives Matter is a very important organization. I deeply support its work. As part of my coming of age, I will make a donation to Black Lives Matter. It is time to change the world, and Black Lives Matter will help make that happen. I want to thank Arlington Street Church for all the religious freedom it has given me. I appreciate how we are open to other spiritualities. I have chosen to be a Unitarian Universalist. It fills my heart with joy to see the donations we make and the education that this church has provided me with. I am proud to be a part of this community. I know that all people deserve to be treated fairly and I will live my life following that belief. When I was younger, I was not a Unitarian Universalist by choice, but as I grew older, I decided to accept Unitarian Universalism, the Arlington Street Church community as my own. Right now, there's a lot of hate in the world, but as Reverend Kim said, love will always succeed in the end. Thank you, Arlington Street Church, for the love you have given me. I will pass it on to the world. James, I present this flaming chalice pendant in celebration of your coming of age. Madison, Catherine, James, I hope you know how incredibly proud we are of you today. All of us, your families, and every member of your congregation, I'm trying to recover from a lot of crying. When you were babies, we dedicated you, Madison and James, and one of the things I said was, we cannot hold you close enough. I feel that way about the three of you today. I want to tell you a very short story I heard last week from my friend Jonathan Scott, who's just retiring from leading Victory Programs, which serves the most desperately poor people in this city, helping get them the food, clothing, housing, medical care, 
addiction recovery and mental health services they need. Several years ago, the Victory Program's outreach staff was working with a woman who was living under the Boston University Bridge. Slowly but surely, she let them into her world, but she wouldn't leave the bridge. And that winter, on a sub-zero night, she almost froze to death. They rushed her to a hospital where she finally began to get the help she needed and began her healing journey. It took a long, long time. And then one night, Victory Programs held a kind of graduation ceremony for her and others who were on the road to recovery. And they all sat in a circle, and each person named something for which they were grateful. And when it was her turn, this woman said, I'm grateful I had a bridge. What's your bridge? Each of us has cause to remember with deep gratitude what has helped and healed and held us through hard times. And we can be a bridge to others, bridging from the place of isolation and loneliness to the heart of beloved spiritual community. Madison, Catherine, James. Today, as we celebrate this bridge crossing as you come of age, know that we have tremendous confidence and faith that each of you will make a difference by which we will be astonished and delighted. You have already made us very proud. Know that we will always be here for you to hold you close and cheer you on. On those long ago baby dedication days, we also said this, may we be worthy guardians of your lives. May we build a community in which you will grow old, surrounded by beauty, embraced by love, and cradled in the arms of peace. And let the people say, amen.
I will not die an unlived life. I will not live in fear of falling or catching fire. I choose to inhabit my days to allow my living to open me, to make me less afraid, more accessible, to loosen my heart until it becomes a wing, a torch, a promise. I choose to risk. I choose to live so that which came to me as seed goes on to the next as blossom. And that which came to me as blossom goes on as fruit. Let us keep this faith, my friends, and pass it on. The service begins when the service ends. Bless your hearts. Amen. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace.